We set off shortly after breakfast on our motorcycle, the 15 kilometer and half an hour drive on good roads into Tatsé, a waterfall inside the jungle that we found was well worth a visit. Tatsé is not the first name that appeared in mind when people think of waterfalls in Luang Prabang. However, Tadse Waterfall is also one of beautiful waterfalls in Luang Prabang, which you should not miss. We passed the China Railroad along the way where we had travelled with the bullet train from Vientiane a few days earlier. In many places, the railway was built on huge concrete structures, 10 to 15 metres above the ground, much like the MRT tracks inside Bangkok. It kind of ruined the charm of nature around the track. From a small village called Bak En, we had to drive about 10 minutes downstream on a slim and long riverboat with a long tail engine along an idyllic part of the Nam Khen River. It was cold in the morning when we set off, only 14 degrees centigrade at 9 o'clock up here in the mountainous landscape of northern Laos, but a pleasant 25 degrees in the middle of the day. The Nam Khen River merges with a much larger Mekong River in Luang Prabang. We paid 5,000 kip for parking the motorcycle in the village park Inn, close to the river bank. 30,000 kip was a cost for both of us, with a river boat, round trip, and 30,000 kip for the entrance to the Tatsé waterfall. A total of 3 euro for both of us. After a 10 minutes boat ride along the small and idyllic river Nanten, we reached the waterfalls 2 kilometers downstream. The place was well adapted for visitors with wooden bridges along the ponds beneath the waterfalls, 
and a couple of restaurants at the lower part of the waterfall on the first level. There were waterfalls on four levels further up into the jungle. This giant old tree was well grown with moss, ferns and lichen, and some other saprophytes which names I don't know. I just had to smile at four or five young girls from Holland who posed in bikinis and Santa hats by the waterfall taking selfies. This cozy little cabin with access via suspension bridge was just irresistible and of course a favorite photo subject. I went alone into the jungle along the river up to levels 2 and 3 while my girlfriend turned and remained down at idyllic level 1. It was not a human being in ward to the higher waterfalls. There was some climbing over trunks up steep slopes and I had a watchful eye for spiders and snakes. There were several poisonous ones here. They are probably so good camouflaged and hidden that I would not have seen them anyway. The scenery was magnificent and a fine background for photos and videos with the turkeys green pools up the river. I don't know if this is a separate tree or if it's a sling plant that climbs up other three trunks. In any case, it was pretty special.
cascades of Tatsa offered great food opportunities as the water spilled over the multi-level rocks into the pools below. Surprisingly, I didn't see any fish at all in the river. Eventually, I changed from long trousers and fleece jacket to swim trunks and t-shirt. The temperature had drastically changed since we drove the motorbike early in the morning. Fortunately, mosquitoes were not there. I've had some nasty mosquito bites on my arms and legs from earlier that have itched two or three days before the swelling and redness subsided. I smeared them with allergy obstructing cream every night before going to bed. Eventually, the landscape began to become so steep and rugged that I turned around. I also did not want my girlfriend to be bored too long at level 1. I crossed the river on a limestone shelf just upstream a broken wooden bridge. Here I also met three other visitors taking selfies with the river and jungle as background. That was easy. side of the river was a bit slippery and I had a fall in a small hill climb. Luckily I didn't hurt myself. <laughs> Did you get that? <laughs> Level 1, I went for a swim in the large turquoise green pool under the waterfalls. It was fresh and I had a good feeling in my body afterwards. There are so many streams of water pouring over unique limestone formations. People can also go for a swim in large pools below the falls. There are also changing rooms and toilets. Tetsa is more popular among locals. They often visit the falls of the weekend. These impressive leaves seem to please my girlfriend a lot. We have seen them in many places in Thailand, but not as gigantic as these ones. There is a restaurant on site which provides typical Laos dishes, such as sticky rice, barbecue, green papaya salad. Here you can also buy some snacks and soft drinks. Bamboo tables placed close to the pools of water at the bottom of the second waterfall is a nice spot to enjoy and prepare a picnic. Besides, you can also find a small area where you can buy souvenirs, postcards, wooden elephant carvings and other classic Southeast Asian trinkets. 
Tatsai waterfalls is most interesting to see during the rainy season as it has a very unequal flow. Tatsai flows around June, July until a couple of months after the rains have stopped. November, December is usually the latest time to visit it for the water. In dry season the falls flow very little, even no water. We were there at Christmas time 2023 and the water flow was still sufficient to give us a good impression. Tensa is only reachable by boat, thus it gives you time to retreat into nature. Even the Tensa is not as splendid and high as Guangxi waterfalls, it is nevertheless a tempting place to visit because of its beautiful location and partly untouched nature with beautiful small waterfalls where water flows over limestone deposits and down into emerald green pools. Since it is somewhat remote, it is sheltered from the worst tourist flow and mostly used by locals on weekends. We especially enjoyed the 10 minutes boat ride on Meikan and happily paid the total of a euro that goes to the community of the small riverside village.